Now entering King's Row. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back. Find the key. So, before I get into some games, here's a uh, little fun thing that people can practice with Moira. Um, I see a lot of people fading and they fade into walls and stuff in, when they're in trouble. They're not really maximizing the distances with fade, where you can, you know, if a diva's chasing you or something and you want to get away. This is a really good way to practice. Um, so if you load up King's Row in a custom game, these tight corridors are like really good for practicing your fade control. So what you want to do is set your fade cooldown to zero in a custom game and then try fading through these corridors without hitting the walls. It's difficult. So I hit the ceiling there, but it's fine with the exit jump. But all of these little um, things, you want to fade in through the en entrance and try and get out of the exit without hitting anything. So if like a diva was chasing you and the diva starts bumping into these walls, um, you're going to be able to get away by doing these kind of having this kind of control right and there's you can pretty much try every doorway and every exit so you could say okay i'm gonna fade through here i'm gonna fade through here you can try fading all the way around here and you want to add a jump like i wasn't satisfied with that one because i hit the wall but it's like you want to add the jump on the end as well and just be able to get through and this is a way that you can just practice you can go many different places right but if you master controlling your fades and this isn't like oh fade jumping or anything right we're not we're not trying to do that this is floor control fades right you can also look to uh like try and do them backwards as well we messed this one up obviously it's, it's quite difficult i don't know uh but it's more for in the open right so if, for example, I was fighting someone around here and I want to get back, I could just go, okay, we want to get our max distance going through here as well, knowing the map as well, to be able to get around the corners. But these tight little corridors, really useful for just practicing your fade movements and they will get you uh, away from any threats chasing you and you'll be able to apply this level of control to uh, real match scenarios. So. Just a fun one to practice. Hey guys, how's it going? We're doing a... Oh, there was a bit of lag. What's this? Silver 3? So I don't really know what I want to focus on today. Um, obviously we're looking to still play a simplistic Moira game style, but I'm hoping to add elements of aggression in there today, like especially coalescence flanks. And I mean, very basic ones. I'm a bit concerned with my connection here because I felt like there was a bit of lag in the, uh, before. Come on, Blizzard. Okay, that's not on me then. Hmm, positioning is a... Uh, it's an interesting one, because how you position is going to depend a lot on your team, on the enemy team, the heroes that are present, the map. Made it to plat after learning from your vods, by the way. Bronze five to platinum one. That's crazy. That's some massive gains. Right, I am gonna be rusty. I've uh, I've been at work, but we should be okay. I will find the key. Right. Oh, first thing I'm gonna do. We're not gonna be in voice. 
We're not going to be in the chat channels. Right, Junker Queen needs a lot of pocketing. We've got a Mercy. There's a Bastion Torb. They reasonably start out the spawn, but that shouldn't affect us because we'll just fire a damage orb over here and then we'll just we can back off. Oh, we got an Eva. Good start. In which case, let's go! Right, we'll try that again. I mean, okay, look, I can I can tell you a lot about my positioning before I even start. Um, now, the positioning will be a bit safer in these games, but I constantly want to be doing something. Every second that I'm just sat there not accomplishing anything is you're, you're wasting value. You're, you're losing or leaking value, right? So I don't want to sit there doing nothing. Now, there's lots of things that you can do when no healing is required. You could be scouting positions. You could be moving forward to try and build your ult. You could be throwing damage orbs at the enemy team. There's there's always something to be doing, right? You could be repositioning, taking up a stronger position. You could be pressing tab, looking at the stats. Um, looking at your team composition, looking at the enemy team composition. Now, I've never played a controller and I'm, I am the worst player on a controller that you'll ever meet. I cannot use one. I've been a, a PC gamer for many decades and I tried playing something like Halo with some friends and it was just awful. Right, okay, so we're with the same people by the looks of it. I'm going to go up these stairs and I'm going to bounce a damage orb um, straight off of this wall here, right in the middle. And that bounces round and you see how it goes up there. Obviously, we've taken some damage. <laughs> okay. Sorry, I was laughing. Sorry, Bastion, I was laughing at the orb. All right, we're just going to try and heal our Junker Queen. She's going for me. Temporarily. There was no anti-grenade. Right clicks when we can. First heal. Right clicks again. She's anti at the moment, so we're just going to fire some orbs and get ready to heal as soon as it starts wearing off. We're actually winning this fight here. We're going to right click, right click, right click. There's a lot of healing coming from the Mercy, but because our Junker Queen is like full health, we can afford to damage and, and just put more pressure on them. That's going to take any damage amping away from Mercy. We shouldn't really, we, uh, really worry about those guys over there. Bastion's now going to be loads and loads of damage. Let's right click the Genji because it's a hard target for other people to hit. Quite easy for Moira to hit. We're still fighting this Junker Queen. We're going to fade as soon as the uh, anti things used. Great kills from them. We're going to have to fade shortly. This Junker Queen's going to run us down. So we're just going to keep on running back and then fade and a jump over back to safety. Assess the situation. Mercy looks like she might go down, but we're running because it's only me and her. See what we can do. Mercy's probably going to die, but we're still going to try and provide some shift routes for her. She can shift towards me now. She doesn't want to, though. Another dead player. Right. We'll fall back a little bit. See if we can support them. We could hear the Genji's footsteps up there. I saw the gifted sub yesterday. Damage orb to put pressure on the Sojourn. It's not going to be that scary, but Bastion's in a bit of trouble. Where's our tank gone, though? Still really far back. We heard footsteps. They're coming closer. In case anybody pushes forward, Sojourn does. Is Sojourn pocketed by Mercy? There's a uh, player up there. We're just right clicking them for some sustain. Ideally, we'd want to go block the forward spawns, but we're not going to. Sojourn might have rail. Okay, we've got to use this kind of. Well, we were going to use this really offensively. Um, but as soon as the anti came in, it was like, okay, we'll use that for attack. 
And then when the blade came in, it was like, well, now we need to Time be to backing up. To their efforts. So it is a bit unfortunate. We're not achieving that much with our uh, Pharaoh Mercy. Genji deflected the orb, but it doesn't matter. We've got a bit of uh, damage out of it. They are pushing the objective for free here a lot. Try and keep the Bastion alive, but we've got to worry about our tank on the front line. Because if we... yeah, exactly. I'm going to fade back, we can't be the one at the front here. Nice wall's going to block them, but Bastion dies. There's pretty much nothing we're going to be able to do here unless our uh, DPS can deal damage or we go crazy aggressive. So, actually going to fade over to here. I'm not going to do much, just going to run away a little bit. Try and uh, contest the objective and turn a few players around because their team's just steamrolling us right now. We are pushing ahead. Evolution is a painful path to walk. There's still a lot of time in this match, by the way, so them pushing the cart this early is not that bad for us, but it does do quite a lot to uh, signal that their team is stronger. Both tanks are reasonably even, even though their Junker Queen's got 10 limbs, ours has got 3, um, in terms of damage-wise. I think the tanks are doing fine. I think the difference here is that uh, we're not getting that much out of our players. We've got to watch the Mercy Res here. Bastion got a nice kill. Just gonna right click anyone we can. We can worry about the cart shortly. Healing our tank. Try and keep him alive. I'm gonna throw a damage orb, pressure the players at the back over there. And it also builds our resources back. So now we're pushing the cart. Mercy's healing quite good there. We could go up and try and support the May. But I think uh, for now we just stick with our tank. So nice team fight win. Was considering firing over at the Genji, but the Genji looks like he's backing off, so we'll fire another one shortly. We can hear loads of footsteps, so where can we bounce it? Okay, they're going to be coming on the floor over there, because we could hear footsteps around there. My orb does hit someone around there. There we go. And they're quite weak. We should go for a Coalescence so, to see if we can secure the forward spawns, but we've got to worry about Junker Queen's ult. We'll just back off from the Junker Queen, she's scary. Try and heal the Mercy while also simultaneously damaging the Genji. If the Mercy dies, it's like a reset, right? Bastion's in a lot of trouble. It's a bit risky investing this much in keeping the Bastion alive, but we'll do what we can. If the Junker Queen turns to fight us, we're going to fade away. Following the heal orb, right click the Genji. Oh, still right click the Genji. The Junker Queen's not got vision of us. If she looks at us, we fade. There is a Sojourn. We're going to fade that. Because we don't have to walk across that highly predictable gap. I'm hoping our tank stays here. Damage orb to help support. Because tank's quite low damage. And he's basically full health. Slept. Stand away from a slept target. Because there's a good chance that they're going to get anti. This is a problem. We're going to bounce a heal orb here. Just for us to play with. Our tank might be in trouble. If we stay there, we die as well. Cover the Bastion while he's in ult. Okay, we're going to fade out of here. And keep running. We're going to heal orb ourselves and follow it. We fight it in the direction that we are running. If the Junker Queen gets too close, we fade. Bastion's in a lot of trouble. We can damage the Mercy quite a lot here. So we're going to use our ultimate. Um, we get the Sojourn and the Mercy. There's a Genji we could hear somewhere around there, so we had to do a lot of uh, strafing around. Hear Genji's footsteps. He might go up there. There we go. Still go around there and then climb the bus, but we want to secure the forward spawns first. Now we can uh, carry on looking around. Oh, bad damage orb. I tried to bounce off that side wall so that it would uh, join our diva. Try and heal Diva up at least a minimum to her yellow armor. Oh, that's scary. We're going to fade that so that we don't keep the anti. She only really got us with the anti. Right click him when we can. This Genji's kind of isolated. We're losing a lot of our players, our tanks and stuff. Can we, uh... Okay. It's trouble, trouble. It's good that we get them to use the old fade when the Genji dashes on us. There. Because now, well, if we had a, done a better fade, he wouldn't have been able to catch us. Notice how we're following our orb? 
Still trying to follow the orb, right? <laughs> so the trick with the Genji is like, as the dash is coming in, you fade. If he doesn't kill you with it, then he's got no dash to catch up with you. If you fade too early, he'll just run towards you with a speed increase. And then, uh, he'll kill you. Alright, we want to be pushing this bot though. We haven't got that much time. Bounce it off the wall to help our diva. Yeah, it's good. When we see Sojourn glow blue, we are. Uh, that's when we want to fade or be behind cover. We're sticking with our Bastion because our Bastion's over on the robot right now. The diva could do it, but he doesn't get it. Damage orb. Help support our move, right? Right, looking at the clock, one minute, ten seconds left. Take a step back, assess the situation, we can go forward, we can probably coalesce this. So let's go. Genji's, we're trying to heal and damage the Genji at the same time, right? That's an anti on us, we've suddenly lost all of our sustain from our coalescence. Right, we're going to fade back and provide Mercy with somewhere to shift. She might go for this again, right click any target we can, but it's for sustain, we're not trying to kill anything. We're still going back, fade the anti. Bounce an orb that's going to help our team, but we can also follow. Anna's committed to try and kill us here. She might find herself in trouble. Great play from the enemy, Mercy. We know the healers are down there, right? So we fire the damage orb up on the target that hasn't got healers next to them. We could have right-clicked and killed them, but we're just opting, uh, you know, we don't want to completely carry the game or anything, right? So, let's have a look. I was tempted to throw a damage orb there. We just want to put some, uh, apply some pressure on them. This Genji is actually causing us some really big problems. We've got to stay with the robot here, though. This is the problem. We've got a lot of pushing to do. Soldier on rails. The Mercy's uh, healing the Genji up. We've got to stay with the robot. It's very unlikely at this point that we uh, can do anything. Right. Pressure damage orb. There's no healing to do right now. It also scouts because we'll hear the bounces, right? Now we've got to stay on the robot. Keep applying heal over times while our resources are good. Symmetra going for risk. We know there are players up there, so let's damage orb. Staying near the robot. Always within, like, fade distance of it. Bastion's anti right now. Okay. Not much we're going to do against that ult. Mercy tries to go for the res, but that's not going to happen. Overall, it's fine. I think that they're... Um, the Genji was causing huge problems with our Bastion. Our Bastion couldn't compete. That's fine. I think we did okay. Play of the game. Remember, we're not just trying to uh, carry every game. We don't care too much about the wins it's more about what's happening during the games i think in retrospect in the game more pressure onto the genji while still trying to provide enough healing for the frontline fight so it's more like okay heal the tank turn around and just try and like harass the genji as much as possible but it was a tricky one anyway Right, let's um, up our gameplay a little bit. Humanity is shackled. I will find the key. Moira, I should crush you like a bug for what you've done. Did you know that certain you can jump over this roof here. Fifteen times. Right, my star size. orb. I'm still working it out for this map, but when you fire an orb into a corner. It's going to hit the part of the corner, hit there, and then come straight back in the direction that you fire it. So, like, we fire it not exactly in the corner, but slightly off. Okay, that didn't work as planned. It's a bit slanted. Maybe here. Maybe up a little bit. I'm going to fire it in advance, right? Even though I might not get it back. So, it hits the corner and then comes back. So, if you fire that late enough, it's going to track the, hit the enemies on the way in, and then bounce, and then hit them on the way out again as well. Now, they didn't come out through that door. 
which is one of the reasons why I'm uh, working on the start of for this one. Listening for footsteps in here while we're uh, trying to provide healing for players here. Okay, we know someone's in there. I'm gonna ping that. Damage off to pressure him because he's on a flank, so he's probably quite isolated and doesn't have healers. And even little bits of damage are going to uh, cause him to retreat. Bouncing an orb off the uh, wall at the back so that it comes back after it's hit him already. We're also losing a lot of players here. Quick look around to see what's going on. We want to provide healing for our Ryan as much as possible, but he's kind of in a room um, at the moment. We can't really go in there. He's anti now, so we're going to fade back. If we need to, we uh, heal orb ourselves, but since we're behind cover now, we can afford to fire a damage orb. It's unlikely he's getting out, and we don't want to find ourselves in a in an isolated position either. Not until our tank comes back. Tank is there. Let's not get ourselves killed. We've still got the ramp to defend, so it's no problem. And oh, right, heal on myself. If we get low, watching my health, not really anything else. Right clicking for sustain. If we get low, we're gonna fade. Just fade back behind the team. Right, bounced an orb that will hopefully help us again in the future. Rather than just firing it straight at my team, it bounced sort of over there. There's a lot of damage. Ryan's gone in for a charge. We've got to fade back. Oh. If we take any damage, we fire the heal orb. Right click to sustain. There's a lot of damage from a jungle queen though, but we're still just firing that orb. We fade when we can. They're going to cap the first point here. Bounce an orb down there. We're just trying to build ult charge here and survive. But yeah, they pretty much walked through us there. Hanzo's just used storm arrows. We can still get headshot by a single arrow. There comes a dragon. We don't have to fade it, but look for any healing that we need to do. We want to keep firing some damage orbs because these damage orbs can bounce like at the bottom. Junk right over there. Stay reasonably well covered. Remember, the objectives are our uh, task here. We can, we're comfortable staying out here because at any time we can just fade in this direction and join our team. But we need our team to move forward a little bit and if they're not going to, then we're going to have to encourage it. Luckily, we've got a great tool to encourage it. We heard the tire, we're going to fade when it gets near us. Alright, pressure. He hasn't got a healer next to him, remember? And he dies to it. Now let's snowball that. So we're going to try and line up as many players as we can both friendly and enemy and if we need to we drop off here damage orb we bounced it so it would also got the ramp and we're just uh we're gonna see if we can join with our team again probably get killed i would have just gone up and uh like fought against the anna there and the hanzo but as i said i don't want to just go and kill everything team's doing okay We've got two critical players. One's about to go down though, I think. Bounce an orb there, so hopefully it bounces in and flat. Junk rats over here again. It's so gonna right click, but stay out of mine range if we can. Yeah, because that chunk of damage would have been us. Another dragon coming in. Line up a heal orb bounce. That'll get here and then people down the ramp. See? We're healing the mate just because we took a second. I mean she died anyway, but. Fade away. I didn't even see her. Ryan's doing a good, really good job contesting this objective, by the way. So if we can just provide like little bits of damage with our orbs to pressure people at the back and then keep this Ryan alive, we're going to hold this for a long time. At least until like a junk rat tire or something comes in. Same thing. Oh, we saw a grenade there, so we faded. They're good health. So wait for another damage orb to build our resources. Hanzo's up there. Got to keep moving to watch that. Keep the, uh, well, try and use this Ryan shield as much as we can. Good shield. We want to go up and use that as close as we can. Okay, we're going to use Coalescence as a defensive maneuver because they just used it against us. So we're primarily healing here because we're actually, we're in quite a good position. So we try and line up anyone we can damage and anyone who's low health on our team. So we're holding this position really well. Pressure on the Junker Queen. Nice pin. Right click, right click. They've lost their tank. Just got to watch that bouncer. And then heal our... Uh... Oh, we did not watch the bouncer very well. 
tires over there. Get ready to fade it again. Fade. As soon as it was getting close, we just faded. I just use default. Default crosshair. Another orb. We're firing so many of these uh, damage orbs just on that wall there. So it bounces down that ramp. And we're, we're pulling off a really good hold here so far. It's not the best wall. It kind of isolated us. Right, when the shatter came in, we want to fire a damage orb. Junker Queen's there. Uh, oh, Ryan's going to take a bit of damage here. Kiriko gets two kills. Heal orb, same position as the damage orbs. So it heals our players in front of us here, but also players down that ramp. Now they've just both been anti. Moira could clean up quite a few players here if we're not careful. Same orb again. Even though we're healing the Kiriko, you never know if someone's going to take damage over here, right? Another bouncing orb. We fire it there. Anyone on this main ramp? Anyone on that second ramp? It is a bit boring, but it's also really effective. Right now, we don't need to be, like, hyper-aggressive. We heard another person there. Right, we're going to damage orb, and we're just going to put pressure. There's a nano, so we'll keep our distance. We don't want to get uh, annihilated up by them. We can hear the players over here. Pressure on them because they don't have healers next to them. Now objective control. Great wall from the May this time. Moira did get in. Going to damage orb and then look for heals. Nice. A great hold around that corner. Or bounces there. Or bounces there. You could get to GM like this. Not going to lie. Like, not. You'd have to do a bit more. You don't need to play the aggressive Moira style. Um... But you, you would get to low GM. You could. But I think that if you are good enough to get to low GM with this style, changing your style, you would get higher. Humanity is shackled. I'm not trying to rank up this account as fast as possible. This is silver something. Oh. Silver three. So we're trying to play in a simplistic style and get the most value. Um, we want to obtain the most value in the easiest manner. Back to playing the hero. That's, that's the whole goal of this series, right? At this ranking, what is the easiest value that we can achieve? At least I can realize that. The easiest value in these silver ranks is be a really good healer. That's it. If we're a really good healer, you will rank out of silver. So although I want to add some like aggressive coalescence usage, we don't really have too much need to be... Uh, a DPS here. Right click when we can and there's not much healing. Apply heal over times. Right click again. I'll Torbjorn over there. See if we can help him out with a heal orb. Right click again. Now we're not really dealing much damage on the front line here. Heal orb side to side. We create a little zone for ourselves. Well not really. We lost it. Oh it's back again. Right. Looking at this, I want to fire as many damage orbs as I can. Our Kiriko's putting loads of pressure. Our Kiriko's basically playing the way that I would be playing as Moira right now. As in, she's going up and putting pressure on players. Um, which has allowed us to move this cart forward because players are distracted. Just going to hide in here. If a bomb comes in here, we're going to run away. Got to be careful of him still. Pressure orb. Okay. As soon as we heard our soldier use the ult, we want to make sure that he stays alive. Watching the spam, not very well, I might add. Could have faded that, but it's no problem. You never know. I'm hearing footsteps. Okay, it's our soldier. Always want to be listening. Always. Damage orb because we're not going to need much healing. Right, Bastion ult. Keep moving. 
and we'll fade if we're in trouble. There it is. Heal anyone who's getting caught in it. Nice, Kiriko. I'm really rating our uh, Kiriko, by the way, so far. We're going to need some uh, heal resources soon. Right, there are ults everywhere. This tire... Wow, see that? Our Kiriko is so good. Right, we've got an ult now, so let's damage orb and amplify, like, the damage that we're putting in. Our Ryan was in a trap. But he's okay. Kiriko's there again. This Kiriko's not silver. This Kiriko's playing really well. Listening for footsteps, focusing on the objective. Take a step back if we need to. We expect them to retreat up there. So we'll put some pressure on them. Battle of the Kirikos. Let's not respect the 1v1. Right click Diva because it's just one tank here. Right, we know there's players up there. So let's put a bit of pressure on them. Objective. Nice. Right, under here because it's safe from the uh, Bastion for now. And let's see if we can do the same orbs that we were doing on the defense, but reversed on the attack. So they go up the ramp here and then hit anyone there. Got to watch out for that hole, though. Torbjorn's on the cart. We're sort of going to do a bit of both, really. Heal up for the Kiriko. She will teleport out if she needs to. I have faith. She's been playing really well. Right, damage orb. Watch out up there. I'm going to ping it in advance, to be honest, so that people look there. Kiriko is looking there. This is not a silver Kiriko player, guys. Right click and cover. Keep an eye on our front line. We can't all just be distracted. Right click any shatter targets. Oh, that's going to hurt. Heal orb for myself. If we fade into the back here, then we can coalescence from behind and get up this ramp. So we can heal our Ryan here. And then any other targets that we can line up while we do it, like this low health diva. Damage orb, because this Ryan's pretty full health, and we're putting pressure on them. We're in trouble here, so let's just fade out. I think we'll have to jump out the window if we put under any more pressure. Kiriko is there for the Ryan, though. But, uh, yeah, I think they're in quite a bit of trouble. I mean, technically, you shouldn't play Moira on any ranked maps. We're out of heal resources. We're going to follow our heal orb and see if we can right-click anything. But we're teaching... How to play Moira if Moira is what you pick. We're going to have to fade this. We just stood still so that we could focus everything on that fade. All of our attention. Bounce an orb there so it bounces his retreat route as well. That's going to hit him more. Notice the soldier was weak up there but we don't just run forward and put ourselves in danger. To try and uh, heal them. This diva's going to eat any orbs that I throw unless I, like, step back. And if I fire the orb here, it might get instantly eaten, right? Like, there it could just get eaten. But if I step back, at least I'm getting a little bit of value while it passes through here. Kiriko's still putting great pressure on them, by the way. Uh, he's in a trap. We'll try and heal him, but it's going to burn up a lot of resources. Right-click for survival. And we may have to uh, fade away here. Heal orb for ourselves. Turn around, right click while we're still on this path of the heal orb. We hear footsteps there. Hello. I'm looking for where we can zone, like, okay, fade to join our team. Our health's low, so we'll let our support passive kick in a little bit. By support mass passive, I mean our Kiriko. Damage orbs, there's not much healing to do, but we'll still apply the heal over times. Right. Let's uh, see what we can do with this. Heal orbs because players are taking a lot of damage. We're using so many ults. I don't really want to use our uh, coalescence in as we need to. We faded the Bastion Bombs. Now we're going to have to use it. We're just about saving the Ryan, but this is putting us in a lot of trouble. Rotate around to heal the Ryan and damage anyone who he knocked down. A bit unfortunate that there's a uh, junk right there. If we try and fade through. We'll just do what we can. It looks like we lose this one as well. They managed to hold the same corner that we did, just better than we did. I mean, I would say we put out a big chunk of healing. I don't even feel like um, we were missing our Kiriko's healing, right? Because of the amount that I was doing and she was putting the pressure on the enemy team. That heal number looks really bad for the Kiriko. 
But at Silver, for our Kiriko to be outputting this much damage and putting pressure on the flanks that we were missing, a lot of players would be screaming at the Kiriko because of these stats, but I think the Kiriko was the best player on our team. You have to understand that you're not going to win every game you play. Um, you should be looking to play the best that you can play, right? If you are playing better than the average support player at your rank, you will rank up. Forget one result. One, one result doesn't matter. The reason why it doesn't matter is because there's five randomly assigned players on the enemy team. Five randomly assigned players on your team, right? We don't know. If, if we were to rate all of these players, like we give every player here a rating, right? And if they're, say... 100, they're a rank 1 smurf, right? If they're 0, they're bronze or something. Well, that means everyone... I, in an ideal world, everyone is a rank 50 here, right? Everyone in the game, the enemy team as well. What ends up happening is you get, like... We've got... Our diva could be a 48 or something. Okay. Our tracer could be a 52. Our torb could be a 30. Our uh, Anna could be some smurf, right? And this, you do the same for the other team, right? And then you add up all of those numbers on each team. And it may be that the enemy team is like 40 ahead of you or 30 ahead of you. That would mean that rather than being a, uh, a 50 rank player, right? You'd need to be an 80 to win that game. Like for your inf level of influence to make a difference. And if, I, if you were an 80 in that game, you're just an obvious smurf. So you're going to lose games. This is like silver three, but what you should be focused on is like just getting more value than the average player and then the results will follow. So don't worry about like the short term results. So just applying some healing, that Sojourn's putting a lot of pressure on us. We want to try and uh, get some sort of damage orb out to him, but she's just almost free farming. Great damage, but... We need to really keep that up, especially as Sim starts to get ramped up. Damage orb again. They've captured the objective, which is unfortunate. Because now if we lose this fight, they're going to get a lot of time in there. So we're looking for right clicks all the time and then more heal over times. Damage orb down the wall. But our team's kind of backed off a bit here because of that Sim wall. Great kill from the Torb. We're looking at the Torb's health if we need to fade around there for an extra angle. Because our Diva's not playing very uh, aggressively. Watch the Torb. Our Diva's playing hyper passive, so I'd rather like focus on our, and I would consider Torb our off tank here, than just heal a passive Diva where we're not accomplishing much. So let's go with the aggression. Because right now we need the aggression. And our Torb is being aggressive. We took a fire strike, so we're going to bounce a heal orb, follow it. Diva will we'll look to apply some like heal over times and stuff when we can. Pressure over on the Sojourn, we're going to fade. Our health is low, but we're going to Coalescence. We get health regen from it, it might encourage our team to move forward. Try and heal the Torb. Torb's full health, damage, what shatter that could come in. Diva's now going for aggression, but only because she just got a nano. Great kill from the Tracer Pulse Bomb. You've got to get this kill. They didn't. That Sim's ramped up, see if we can get a kill on them. All this time, though, they've got the objective. Kill the turrets. We oh, what? Imagine that, an educational series, and I try and heal a turret. Good job, Arx. Right, we finally capped it, but, I mean, that took way too long. Bounce an orb. It should hit this wall and this wall, and we can just stay in this path. Gonna hide from the Sojourn. Still want to apply heal over times and right click when we can. We heard the Ryan coming in for a pin there. He could have. Sh um... Oh no, he used his shatter last fight actually. Right, Diva's going in to block the uh, objective a bit. We'll take that and we're following the orb. We're going to fade back, but we still need players to go forward. Diva needs to be on that point. Doesn't go on the point now. So they actually cap the point again at a time that we really need the point. Anti-target. We need some damage orbs. Keep the pressure up. The turret. Where's the others? If there's one turret, there's normally more. Oh, 
Okay, Shatter's probably up as well. So, got to watch out for that. We're trying to stay on the point, but if we need to fade... Okay, since I've been ulted, let's go forward. We've got to watch the Shatter again, though. Remember, I keep calling it out, but that's because that's the threat that I'm terrified of right now. Okay, it's overtime. We're sitting on the point. We're not leaving it. Diva is, so we will have to uh, leave it for now. Watch the Sojourn Railgun. Kill the team here. Diva will come back to us. But yeah, we do have to play in this, uh, as Lemonade says, in this danger zone. We hear footsteps. Always listen to footsteps. Get a headset, guys. We hear more footsteps. There's the soldier, and if we can, we want to put pressure on him. That soldier's probably dead. Yeah, new target. Okay, we're just trying to contest the point as much as possible. If they get it, we're only going to have a, a second with overtime. Diva went for it. We're going to have to fade onto point. Get the touch. We're just running. Pulling some players with us. Heal all forward. Sojourn's probably going to kill us. Fade again. Just contesting the point. We've got players on it, but keep an eye on it. Okay. Just going to right-click those turrets when we can. Symmetra. We've got all this. It's overtime, so we might as well run away from the Rhine. Now we have to run in because we're just trying to contest the point. We see a target. Oh, fade. Okay, we're leaving the point again. We're dead now. Yeah, our team leave the point. So I had to contest it way too much then. I would have appreciated a little bit more support from the team. But it's... uh. No, because I, I don't I don't think that's the right approach a lot of the time. Where well, you've said to review a lost game. Um, it's sort of a little bit pointless. Because so many of your lost games are going to be lost simply because of matchmaking. Simply because of influences outside of your control. Now, obviously, you can still analyse your own gameplay and say what you would do better. But it's not what you would do to win the game. It would just be, what can you do to be a better player? And if you're doing that, that's fine. But if it's like, oh, how could I have won the game? There's so many games which the answer is, you won't. We need to get out of this point, uh, this doorway. Because otherwise we're just going to... This is bad, right? Always try and encourage your team to go forward out of there. Because we don't get out of here now. So as of right now, while we're early into the stream, what I'm trying to do is find, like, the minimum amount of influence that will win the game. It's like experimentation, right? So we're not trying to go, like, too crazy. We're trying to do the minimum. That we'll have enough of an influence on a game to win. Okay, they're in trouble. Can we encourage our team to go out for the point? Our Torb was aggressive before. Just, oh, there's sim turrets on there. Okay, if we need to, we fade back. Okay, Torb did go, but a little bit too late. Monkey's in now. We've got to go support. That was up there because I stayed aggression. That orb's meant to bounce around in the point if we make a push onto it. We're out of resources, though, so we're right-clicking, then just heals. Damage orb now gives us resources. Team's not moving forward. Monkey tried. Anti-target. We should be able to get him. Gonna fade to join our team. There could be a shatter. I think we just dodged that. Look, there, there's too much, right? We need to actually make a play. There were turrets up here earlier. Yeah, there and there. So we'll do those for our team. There's a Sojourn next to us as well. Our team don't want to go forward. Okay, 
Kill the turrets for our team. We're on the objective. He's anti, so uh, he's in a lot of trouble. But we get the objective for it. Are they just going to be able to uh, retake it back again? Nope. I don't believe that there's too much that I would change in how I was playing in that game. So we go next. <laughs> redemptions. You want the redemptions back. Yeah, sim symbols do not block coalescence. Welcome to Circuit Royale. Prepare to attack. Select your hero. You try being more aggressive to improve my chances to win, and I think I try to a degree when I just not good both mechanically and with my game sense. What is a better strategy? Would you say you are a better healer than you are a duelist or a flanker? In most cases with support players, that is the case, right? It's why you pick support in the first place. Humanity so what I would suggest I is that by you default, start out as your teacher. passive healer, right? And then when it's not working, you ever been the eldest son? Um, rather than just accept your fate, then make the changes to try some aggression because at that point what have you got to lose right now it's like in in that last game earlier on i would have gone way more aggressive because i could see that the team mainly our tank when our tank was on diva was terrified of getting close to the rhine and the rhine was just holding the point right if we fire a damage orb somewhere on this wall and a little bit higher so maybe it doesn't hit that barrier. It can bounce around that corner and keep hitting them. And then while it's still hitting them, we're getting resources. We'll do the same one again. The Pharah, we've got to keep be aware of her, but a Pharah we don't want to play too passively because if we just play passive, we're going to uh, just, all of our resources are going to get burned up. Got to fade away from the wall. Orissa's got a nice level of aggression so we want to use a number of damage orbs that's really good their tank is isolated we want to fade and join in with this because we can get the kill that was a terrible uh pin from the rhine that's going to put them in problem got to watch the mercy res because we really don't want that rhine to be res if a rocket hits us we're going to fade damage orb again they don't have tanks we know that the pressure is going to be really good for us Lucio is trying to boop us and block the objective but he will go down there's a May over there, a Mercy as well. We can just like right click anything and then make sure we're pushing the objective. Uh, yeah, I possibly could. Damage orbs on these barriers and heal orbs, by the way, are really good because they always seem to just bounce around the corner and hit players. Like you could be at almost any angle here and any one of these barriers. Like let's fire one at this one. Oh look, it bounces around the corner. Right, they're in a bit of trouble from this uh, Lucio, but we've got to watch our tank. Ash is in trouble. If we need to, we're going to uh, use Coalescence. Let's do it. Let's not hesitate too much with our ult. It's an intimidating ult for them to hear. That Farah doesn't have a healer with her right now. Fade to join our Orisa. There's a Lucio near us. It's going to boop us around like crazy. Right click for survival. Fade if we can. Nope. Yeah, it does regen resources quicker, but you lose out on like 90% of the DPS that your right click would have done. And since I find resources are generally pretty easy to get back these days, I don't, I rarely tap, like, uh, tap the right mouse button to get resources back. If I do tap it, it's usually on a Hammond or a Bob. They're pretty much the only two that I do it on. Now, there's a healing gear. I was going to say there's a health pack in there. Keep distance from the Reaper, but we still want to right click. Lucio might go for a touch. No. Fire a damage orb up there. We know there's another player there because it wasn't hitting the Lucio. Can take cover in here. They've swapped the Pharah, which is nice. Let's 
fire an orb. And then watch out for our Ash because we can see them all moving forward. We're in this, so we need to fade out of it before we get frozen. There's a Mei here. Damage orbs put pressure on them. Right click Reapers. Right click Mei. Now this is entirely different, right, because of our Arissa. Arissa's doing a great job. Yeah, but I, I don't like having, like, so little damage coming out from it. It's fine every now and again. I mean, if you want it even quicker, you bind it to Mouse Wheel. Damage or bounce there so it goes round the corner. Anyone who takes cover back towards that spawn. We right click for the self regen and we're going to fire that. Oh, where's my orb? We find it, we follow it. We're going to fade out of here though because we've been in that corner for quite a while and the players were moving towards us. Heal orb to help out with the healing a little bit. That's good. Right, let's let's enhance with this. Great wall from the May. We've got a lot of pressure here. Players lined up in front of us. Our Arissa's health is good. Nice blocking on the Mercy. We finish her off. Let's uh, fade out of here and just join up with our Arissa again. There's a May there. There's also a window that we've got to be a bit scared of. Same bounce on that wall because it'll bounce around the corner and any players over there that are weak and hiding around that corner, like that junk rat, get killed to those orbs. Bounce here, so it bounces around the other corner over there. Same principle. If Ash gets a nice meaty headshot on a play around there, an orb could kill them. Healing's good. We could charge the resources this way, so let's uh, fire another one. We're just going to keep firing these damage orbs. Oh, there's an Orisa there. Orisa pushing suicide aggressive. So, objective. We just tap you. Well, not, not tap healing as such. We're. Uh, just applying heal over times. And still want to focus on the aggressive, but on the objective even. So we're always trying to bounce the orbs so that they go around their retreat routes, like this one, right? Watch the spear from the Orisa. So if we think players are going to retreat down there, this orb bounces around in that zone and keeps on bouncing there. We fade this, just get out of it. No, it doesn't do more damage through back window. Right, there's a May freeze, so we're just going to fade. We're probably not going to be able to save these low health players, and we've got to step back because of the tire. It could be aimed at that Hanzo. Yeah, that's all right. Got to fade to the other side here. We'll have a jump to get some distance. Let the passive regen our health a bit. Enemy trap there. Oh, Rissa. Okay, can we support the Bob? Okay, she did go down. Our tank's coming back soon, so we are... Uh... Right, they got fire again. Fade to the back, just so that we've got a nice heal. And if we coalescence, we can hit all of our team in front of us. Now, we might want to do that now. Orbs going through the uh, window. Their damage comes out quicker, but they don't do more damage. Now, we want to push this. There's a risk of sleep. But we do want to push this because uh, we've killed a bunch of players. And uh, let's snowball it, basically. Right, heal zones until the cart arrives. The cart will uh, it'll hit the cart and go weird. There's a window, so we want to try and stay behind cover. Kill the lamp so the Arissa ult does more. Zone the Anna with a damage orb. We're just standing around the car. May goes to try and go in for a block. We complete with like a minute left. You were foolish to face me. Not bad. Score three to zero. Switching sides. The difference when we've got a much more aggressive tank your defenses. is that we so can also move up into a more aggressive position where we get a lot more right clicks, a lot more damage orbs. So yeah, there's t there's two ways to deal with um, Anna nading your team. 
but we won't really be covering one of them for a while. Hey, Miss Kamama, how's it going? So the first one is play aggressive against the Ana because the more that you can um, uh, make the Ana use nade on herself to survive, the less the nades are going to be hitting your team. Uh, what rank am I on tank and DPS? Uh, my peak rank on DPS was uh, 4,400, which would be GM2 these days. When, um, but I haven't really been playing DPS. Tank, I, I have no idea what my peak on tank was. Probably like diamond or something, but I never played it. I used to be a DPS player before I played Moira. We bounced this orb late off of that wall and it should bounce back again. So it will hit them on the way back. See if we get any hits. Reaper there. Right click the Reapers. Heal over time. Right click the Reaper if possible. Heal orb forward. And we're going to fade backwards. The reason why we do that is because we need to chase the heal orb for sustain. But if we're walking into their team, we're going to be put in a lot of trouble. We create a heal zone here because I think our Orisa is going to retreat back to here. But we're not going to just heal the Orisa against this Reaper. We want to right click the Reaper as much as possible. Because otherwise she's just going to out sustain. Same damage orb there. A mistake that people make is trying to just indefinitely heal against Reapers. You don't want to. You want to keep your distance and put damage onto them. To cancel out their sustain. Then let them overextend into the team. As much damage on this Reaper as we can. Like, heals are good. You might deflect. Nah, he jumped over it. It's fine. Keep your distance from the Reaper. Reaper's attacking your tank. Add a heal. And then start right-clicking. Because the biggest damage reduction you're going to get against the Reaper is making him use his shift. It's Him using his shift is more healing than yours. And the moment he uses his shift, that's when you can heal your team up. Because he's not dealing any damage to you. Heal over time on the Hanzo. Right-clicks again. Damage orbs. Reaper has to run away. If we try and heal the Hanzo, like, he can just walk forward. If the Hanzo's missing his shots, he will eventually kill him. The Reaper will kill that Hanzo, and then we're just left in a bad position. They're anteed, and I'm actually going to use this and step all the way back in case there's a Shatter. I don't know if they'll have a Shatter, but look, it discouraged them. They just used that, uh... They were, well, they were, they were going to go in for, um... On the anti-target, there's the Reaper. Right-clicking, right-clicking. Now we've got to watch out for the drop-down ult from the Reaper. So we want to see if we can work out where he is. Nice shot from uh <laughs> from Bob. Okay, heal Orisa again. See, Orisa's actually Orisa's all right without too much healing from us because we do have another healer, right? So we don't always need to chase around every low target. Still, this shatter's a bit scary, so. When we see the Ryan approaching, if we are at least back, then we've got the option to heal over forward, walk forward, and heal everybody. And it's about now that the Ryan should be able to get it, right? DPS are doing really well. Tank's doing really well. Right, we're scared of this now because of the drop down ult. Fade. Because we were ready for it, we escape and get back. Can we get over to our Orisa? looks like we can now still shatter right i didn't hear them use it so we'll stay out of range which is here and right click the resources keep our ace alive if we can damage orb over for the reaper and for resources we're not scared of the shatter anymore because they just used it there's a lot of players up there, so we'll borrow damage orb, resources. Coalescence. We've got to run from the Reaper, even with our Coalescence, though. Anna's isolated at the back, so we can kill her. We're going to fade this, get back, and just assess the situation. We will heal all forward, but we'll wait for our team to take some damage first. Okay, never mind. Our passive healed us up, so we can afford a damage orb. We've got to try and block the cart, though. So we're going to step here and fade if we take a big shot. Now, hopefully someone else gets there. Heal orb over onto the point. Oh, that's going to hurt. Not really avoidable. Arissa, let's support this. Nice. Don't think she's going to be able to kill everything, though. 
Nice, well controlled. We didn't have to go crazy aggressive there, but we were putting out so much damage through just those damage orbs, right? Damage orbs and a little bit of right clicking passively, and we're still putting out huge numbers. And like, I don't think we did anything spectacular in that game. Now, I believe that we had the better team. My influence on that game actually wasn't that strong. I think we genuinely had a better team before the game started. The previous games, it's like, okay, I think our team was significantly worse than the enemy team. This will happen. You will go wins, losses, wins, losses, wins, losses, right? The key is that if you are slightly better than the other players at your rank, then you'd expect to have slightly more wins than losses because when you get those games that are like 50-50 dead even, that's when you're, you being the better support over the other players on the enemy team is going to get you the win. And now over time, those little wins will rank up. 